Homestead est une petite ville paisible située au sud de Miami. On y trouve l'un des édifices mégalithiques les plus mystérieux de l'époque moderne. Un jardin de pierre fait de blocs d'anciens corail taillés, pesant pour certains près de 30 tonnes. C'est le Coral Castle, le château de corail. Le complexe s'étend sur quelques centaines de mètres carrés. Son architecture et ses sculptures n'en finissent pas d'émerveiller les touristes. Pourtant, ce site ne date pas du tout de l'Antiquité. Coral Castle en Floride est le seul site mégalithique construit à la période contemporaine. En 1923, Ed Litzkalnin, un immigrant de Lettonie, a entrepris de construire ce qu'il appelait à l'époque « Rock Gate Park ». Il assure alors qu'il n'utiliserait aucune machine moderne pour arriver à ses fins et qu'il s'y prendrait sans aucune aide extérieure. Ed était un ermite, quelqu'un de solitaire. Il vivait en reclus, loin du monde extérieur. Et c'était un génie. Il voulait construire ce monument en l'honneur de son amour de jeunesse, resté en Lettonie. Il espérait qu'elle le rejoindrait en Floride un jour, mais elle ne l'a jamais fait. La grande question, c'est comment cet homme chétif a pu déplacer ses roches lui-même, sans machine. Ed Litzkalnin ne pèse en effet que 45 kg pour 1,50 m. Et il n'aurait utilisé qu'un simple trépied artisanal pour lever les charges. Il avait un trépied, trois branches de pain bricolées avec quelques chaînes. Comment a-t-il pu déplacer des pierres de 10 tonnes avec ça C'est impossible. Il travaillait la nuit, il ne laissait personne l'observer. Et il prétendait connaître les secrets des bâtisseurs de pyramides. À quel secret fait-il allusion Aurait-il découvert la technologie utilisée par ceux qui auraient réalisé les alignements de menhirs de Karnak ou les murailles de Saksaiwaman Il racontait à qui voulait l'entendre qu'il avait percé les secrets utilisés par les Égyptiens lors de la construction des pyramides. Quel secret S'agissait-il d'un outil ou d'une méthode On n'en sait rien. Ed Liskalnin va continuer son œuvre jusqu'à sa mort en 1951. Si l'on en croit les écrits qu'il a laissés derrière lui, il aurait découvert de quelle façon les bâtisseurs de pyramides pouvaient annuler la masse d'un objet. Il a écrit sur ce qu'il appelait le courant magnétique et expliqué que la gravité agissait comme un aimant. En inversant la polarité d'un objet, peut-être en le bombardant de certaines ondes, par exemple, on peut donc annuler la masse de cet objet, quelle que soit sa taille. On peut ainsi le soulever facilement. Mais que serait devenu cet appareil mystérieux capable de défier la gravitation universelle Certains pensent qu'il se trouvait dans une étrange boîte noire, visible sur certaines photos. Une boîte qui, depuis la mort de son détenteur, a disparu. Personne n'a jamais vu la boîte noire que l'on aperçoit en haut de ce trépied. Elle s'est tout simplement volatilisée. Nous pensons que cette boîte noire contenait l'appareil qui permettait d'annuler la masse des objets à manipuler et que son secret reste jalousement gardé. On a découvert un appareil magnétique dans l'une de ses autres propriétés qui exploitait la supraconduction. Ce qui est certain, c'est que cette boîte contenait un appareil plus perfectionné, capable de faire flotter toutes ces pierres dans les airs et de les assembler comme un puzzle. La lévitation est le seul procédé permettant de maintenir des objets lourds en flottaison, comme ces trains à supraconduction. Ces trains ne sont jamais en contact avec leurs rails. Ils flottent au-dessus grâce aux propriétés physiques des champs magnétiques. On peut imaginer que des machines utilisaient l'électromagnétisme pour compenser la gravitation universelle. 
c'était la grande quête d'Einstein. L'objectif ultime d'une telle technologie, bien sûr, était de permettre à un vaisseau de se déplacer dans l'espace. Ed Litzkalnin a-t-il réellement réussi à faire léviter les pierres afin d'assembler sans effort Coral Castle Si c'est le cas, qui aurait bien pu lui apprendre à fabriquer ou à utiliser cet appareil il a emporté son secret dans la tombe. La question est, a-t-il inventé cette machine Ou en a-t-il hérité de quelqu'un A-t-il appris à la construire par tradition Ou grâce à l'intervention de quelqu'un d'autre La seule chose que l'on peut dire, c'est que quelqu'un qui maîtrisait parfaitement les lois de la gravité a donné la possibilité à une personne de déplacer des pierres en les rendant extrêmement légères. Il n'y a qu'une explication. Cette technologie vient d'une autre planète. C'est fascinant de se dire que cet homme a pu construire cette structure seul. Est-ce que je dis qu'il a été aidé par des extraterrestres Non, je n'en sais rien. Est-ce que j'exclus cette possibilité Non. History that cannot be explained. An enigma that defies reason. A surprising and unexpected answer. To encounter such a mystery firsthand may change your life forever. Face to face with the greatest riddles of the ages, the world's most profound mysteries reach out and touch your life in ways you never imagined possible. For hundreds, no thousands of years, kings and generals, historians and archaeologists, architects and mathematicians have argued over who and how the Great Pyramids were built. Is it possible the answer can be found not in some ancient Egyptian tomb, but in an amazing tourist attraction in modern-day Florida called the Coral Castle? Barely five feet tall and weighing slightly less than 100 pounds, a man by the name of Edward Leet Skalnin seems to have accomplished the Herculean feat of quarrying, cutting, moving, and raising 1,100 tons of coral rock using only simple tools. Could he have done it by himself? Is it possible that one man, a small man at that, could cut, quarry, and move these massive coral stones by himself? Could it be there is some secret of levitation or anti-gravity known to ancient builders that was rediscovered by Edward Leed Skalman? How could one man cut and set this nine-ton coral gate so precisely that even today a child can move it with one finger? The answer will amaze you. Coral Castle is perhaps America's most intriguing mystery. Like the great pyramids of Egypt, it shouldn't be there. But there it is, welcoming visitors every day into its unusual confines and its unbelievable history. Ed Lee Scowlin said he knew the secrets of how the pyramids of Egypt were built, and I believe his claim was accurate. Did Lee Scowlin somehow stumble onto some mechanism known only to ancient architects and use that knowledge to float enormous coral stones into place? Leeds Gallon apparently devoted his entire life to this project. Was it a labor of love? Why did he always work alone and at night? What was the great discovery he worked so hard to protect? The epicenter of Coral Castle's mystery is Ed Leeds Scalman himself. Who was he? Why did he leave Latvia? And how did he finally end up so far away in Florida? 
And is there evidence that the story Lead Scalman told visitors about himself and the castle was less than the entire truth? Edward Scalman was born in Latin in the year of 1887. There he trained as a cleric and also as a stone mason. In 1912, at the age of 26, he was engaged to his 16-year-old girlfriend, Agnes Scoff. The day before the wedding, she decided to call the wedding off, telling Ed that he was poor to marry her. Crushed by this sudden rejection, Ed left Latvia that year, and eventually he wound up in Florida. He constructed the Cora Castle as a future home for him, Agnes, and their children. Will you please believe it or not, called this Feast of Love table the world's largest valentine. Ed called this the Grot of the Three Bears, where the children would play, and he created this repentance corner where their naughty children could be punished. There's a letter from Andrew Stavro, who investigated Ed's life in Latvia. He tells a different story. I met his relatives, found one document and one old photograph of him. In short, Ed's descendants insist that during the 1905 and 1907 uprising, he was an armed guard against the Tsar and left Latvia because of repression of the Tsar's secret police. If Lee Scalman was keeping a low profile about his past, then can we entirely trust his explanations about how he moved and lifted coral stones weighing up to 30 tons? And why would Lee Scalman keep his actual construction methods secret? One person who knew Ed remembers asking him how he did it. Ed always seemed a little vague on just how he attacked the task of moving the huge tonnage of rock, but he told me he understood all the laws of weights and levers. To explain how he managed to move the huge stones, Ed would always tell people, I have discovered the secrets of the pyramids. I have found out how the Egyptians and the ancient builders in Peru, Yucatan and Asia, with only primitive tools, raised and set in place blocks of stone weighing many tons. If we assume that Edley Scowlin and the pyramid builders were using the same tools and methods, then based on Ed's abilities, it would have only taken approximately 4,700 workers to build the Great Pyramid instead of the 20,000 to 100,000 that is estimated. This photograph seems to show Leeds Scalman using a chain hoist on a tripod structure to lift the coral blocks. Indeed, many people who knew Ed Leeds Scalman believe he moved those blocks with simple, conventional tools, though no one actually saw him work. In order to prove the methods of construction that Leeds Scalman used, we'd have to replicate the more difficult aspects of the work. Leedskalnin might have been able to hoist the six-ton blocks for the wall with conventional mechanical tools. But that does not explain how he raised the 23-ton obelisk, or especially this 30-ton block in this wall, all by himself and only with a 10-ton chain hoist. One of the most amazing aspects of this mystery is its complete accessibility. The castle is, after all, open to the public. So has anyone ever tried to move any of Leedskalnin's structures with conventional tools? Or tried to figure out how many people would be needed to do the job? One of Ed's most remarkable works is the nine-ton door. It's so perfectly balanced on an old mill shaft that incredibly it will open to the push of one finger. In order to repair the door in 1986, Cora Castle had to hire a six-man crew with a 20-ton crane to move the door and make the needed repairs. And after the repair, the door was no longer as perfectly balanced and positioned as when Leeds Scalman constructed and placed it by himself. So how did Leeds Scalman do it? And just how much did Leeds Scalman want the world to know? Can we discover any clues to his secret building methods in the papers and booklets he wrote? In his booklet on magnetic current, Leeds Scalman said that all matter consisted of individual magnets. He believed that magnets from the middle of the Earth attracting objects containing both North and South Pole magnets cause gravity. Is it possible that Lee Scalman somehow figured out how to turn off gravity using his unconventional ideas about the nature of all matter? But isn't a world without the law of gravity really an impossibility? 
I was baffled about the nature of anti-gravity until a colleague asked me to describe it. I said that it was a means by which objects could be lifted. And then I realized that we were already applying anti-gravitational techniques in our everyday life. Like getting out of bed in the morning, or an airplane, rocket and forklift are all devices to overcome gravity. So I asked myself, what if there's no such thing as gravity? If, as Lee Skalning claimed, all things, all matter consists of individual magnets, could the known properties of magnetism explain gravity? Then I began to speculate that Lee Skalin was creating anti-gravity by simply flipping the magnetic poles in his coral blocks so they would match and therefore repel the magnetic polarity of the Earth. The flywheel in Lee Skalin's tool shop consists of bar magnets set in cement. It is mounted on a fourth row camshaft. But this photo of Lee Skalin with his hand on the crank may not represent the entire operation. It is possible that there was a reciprocating engine attached to the crankshaft so that Ed could walk away and leave the flywheel running. I believe also that it became part of a radio transmitter. This photo of Ed Lee Scalman working shows him lifting a coral stone with his chain hoist on a wooden tripod. The tripod was made of old telephone poles with a small wooden box on top. Leading out of the box was a wire cable that goes down towards the ground. What was in the box is of course a mystery, but I speculate that it contained radio tuners such as those found in his tool shed. In this other photo, Ed is standing on the crossbars of the tripod. We can see that steps go up one of the poles to the small box. So it seems Lee Scarlin needed access to the box while he was working, perhaps to adjust the tuners. Magnets, flywheels, reciprocating engines, transformers, tripods with mysterious boxes and radio tuners. How do the pieces of this puzzle fit together? And could the answer be a way to defy gravity and a spectacular end to the energy crisis? With rolling blackouts and gas prices skyrocketing at the pumps, you won't want to miss what comes next. According to reports, whenever someone came up to the castle and rang the correct number of times to gain entrance, Leed Scalman would cover up his tools before coming out to talk to the person. Why was Leed Scalman so secretive about how he moved the huge coral stones? People also said he had a sixth sense to detect if someone was secretly watching and he would immediately stop working and simply putter around. There is a mindset called the Italian Tile Layer Syndrome. These renowned tilers would go all over the world laying tile for important buildings and people. No one was allowed to watch them because they were protecting their trade secrets. I believe that Leed Scalman had this kind of mindset. Was Ed Leed Scalman so secretive about his construction methods and about himself that he even used a hidden code in his writings? Leed Scalman self-published this curious little book called A Book in Every Home. Following each page, he left a blank page with this explanation. Reader, if for any reason you do not like the things I say in this little book, I left just as much space as I use so you can write your own opinion opposite it and see if you can do better. It's possible that he left the empty space for the reader to decipher a code hidden in metaphors in his book. The code may ultimately reveal how he built the Coral Castle. The book also talks about family life, Sweet Sixteen, and how to raise boys and girls. One curious sentence says, Don't raise girls too big by overfeeding them. Could raising girls be a metaphor for raising a stone? In Lee Scalning's writings on magnetic current, he suggests a series of experiments using magnets. Perhaps these experiments are an important key to understanding how Lee Scalning, using anti-gravity, moved coral blocks. That Ed's secrets lie hidden in code and metaphors in his writing is an intriguing possibility. But can we look anywhere else for evidence that Ed really figured out how to eliminate or minimize the effects of gravity? Did some neighbors penetrate the wall of secrecy and actually catch Ed? One legend is that there were some children spying on Ed undetected. 
and saw him floating coral blocks in the air like hydrogen balloons. There are additional reported incidents. In 1936, Lee Scowlin decided to move his original castle in Florida City, Ed called it Rockgate, to Homestead, reportedly to escape the threat to his privacy from a subdivision to be built nearby. He dismantled the castle and moved it, stone by stone, to Homestead, where it is today. For the first and only time, Lee Scowlin sought help with the move. Ed Lee Scowlin hired a tractor to pull the chassis of an old truck that he had. He had the driver leave the empty truck and come back the following morning to haul the full load of heavy coral stone to Homestead. But once the driver came back unexpectedly after only 30 minutes, to his amazement he found that the truck was already loaded down with several huge blocks of coral. The driver remembered. It was impossible to have stacked those gigantic blocks in under 30 minutes, even with a steam-powered derrick. And Ed had no equipment, just a simple tackle and chain hoist. Yet there they were, piled like cordwood. When the truck moved the 23-ton obelisk, Lee Scowlin told the driver that he would have it raised in position by the following morning. And indeed, when the driver returned the following morning, the obelisk was raised. But why did Lee Scowlin undertake the daunting task of moving the entire castle 10 miles from Atlantic City to Homestead, Florida? Was there a reason besides the prospect of a housing development close to the castle? And does the actual location of the castle itself contribute to its mystery? Some researchers believe that there is an energy grid that is formed around the entire Earth, an invisible pattern of energy lines that concentrate points of electromagnetic energy where the lines intersect. Did Lee Scowlin somehow learn the secrets of this energy grid and his coral castle a power point? I've heard that it had a map of the magnetic energy points of the Earth. Ray Stoner, in his book, The Enigma of Coral Castle, suggests that Liscalni moved the original castle to Homestead not because of an encroaching housing development, but because a surveying error misplaced the original castle 10 miles from the energy grid. Captain Bruce Cathy, a commercial pilot and author, is considered the world's leading authority on the energy grid. I've just recently been running um, the uh, given position of Coral Castle through my computer using the computer program that we've developed and I found that there is a definite link uh, with gravitational forces and also uh, a link there with the Earth's magnetic field. So it's obvious that Ed definitely knew something about Einstein's E equals MC squared and the unified fields. Uh, he was well ahead of what everybody thought he was. He wasn't dumb. He knew something. There are other well-known anomalies and monuments on this energy grid, including Stonehenge on the Salisbury Plain in England and the Pyramids and the Sphinx on the Giza Plateau. Interestingly, many questions surround the construction of these huge monuments and how they were built with the primitive technology of ancient times. Did Ed Leed Scalman really understand how to use this so-called energy grid? And is it even possible to speculate on how Leed Scalman used his unconventional view of matter and magnets to achieve anti-gravity? Here is my idea of how Leed Scalman flipped the magnets in his coral blocks and achieved anti-gravity. I believe Leed Scalman lifted a coral stone with a chain hoist, just enough to get the wire cable, coming from the small box on the tripod, wrapped around the stone center. Then he went back to the tool shed and he cranked the flywheel and kept it turning with the reciprocating engine. The flywheel transmitted a frequency to the small box on the tripod. The tuners in the box converted the frequency into an electromagnetic field around the coral block, thus flipping the magnetic pole in the coral and neutralizing its weight. As yet, there is no working model based on my theory on how Lee Scalman easily moved his stones, but the day when that can be demonstrated is close. Perhaps some oddities reported about Leed Scalman do make sense. What about the neighbors who reported hearing Leed Scalman singing to the stones? The singing they heard might very well have been the sounds of frequencies coming from the flywheel and the box on top of the tripod as he moved huge blocks. There are a number of tantalizing clues. For example, here in Ed's tool shed are bottles wound with copper wire and a variety of radio tuners. What could be the significance of these objects? I believe Lee Scowlin was experimenting to find the frequencies that would work to flip the magnets in the block. 
and perhaps each block had a different resonant frequency. If all of this, or if any of this is possible, perhaps even some of the structures constructed by Ed Leeds Scallon at Coral Castle take on a new significance. For example, isn't it going just a bit far to create a separate room for the punishment of children you don't know if you'll ever have? I discovered that Ed's repentance corner is like a dead sound chamber where perhaps he listened to different frequencies on his radio tuners. Ed Leeds Scalman's construction of Coral Castle seems to elude any explanation based on known science and conventional tools. But what if we open our minds just a little bit? What if it really is possible to eliminate or greatly lessen the effect of gravity? What would the world look and be like with a new science and Ed Leeds Scalman's tools? Could it help explain some mysteries from our past? Leeds Scalman would appreciate that I'm here at the Florida table cut into the shape of the state of Florida. He envisioned sitting here with the governor of Florida along with the legislature, sitting in the rocking chairs discussing important matters. If anti-gravity is the answer to Lee Scalman's construction of Coral Castle, it will be possible to finally know how Stonehenge, the Sphinx, and the Great Pyramid and other ancient monuments were constructed, all unexplained by the primitive technology of their times. My research shows that the Great Pyramid was a geomechanical power plant that responded sympathetically with the Earth's vibrations, converting that energy into electricity. The Egyptians used the same principles of anti-gravity that Ed Lee Scalman understood and created an unlimited source of clean energy. The Great Pyramid and other ancient monuments were constructed, all unexplained by the primitive technology of their times. My research shows that the Great Pyramid was a geomechanical power plant that responded sympathetically with the Earth's vibrations, converting that energy into electricity. The Egyptians used the same principles of anti-gravity that Ed Lee Scalman understood and created an unlimited source of clean energy. Could we be talking about an end to the current energy crisis? And an end to rapidly escalating gas prices at the pump? And electric rates at home? Can we stop building costly new power generating plants? There is a small group of scientists in the world that have all this knowledge and they're using it. We're told in recent days that there's an energy crisis. We're having problems with creating new energy sources. Well, um, that's not true. The whole of the gravity field is energy and uh, it'll never run out. Now, all these new energy systems, uh, all you'll have in the house, whether it be an antenna on the roof, uh, a small box full of electrical circuits uh, hanging on the wall somewhere or in a cupboard, and you've got free power. That's all you need. This was done right back in 1931 by Tesla, Nikola Tesla. He, um, he took the motor out of a PSR car, uh, put one of his electric motors in it, ran a car with the same method. He had a, approximately about six foot of aerial sticking at the back of the car. He had a small box under the dashboard uh, full of electric circuits and a few valves. And he was getting 90 miles an hour out of the thing. Now I think we can boil this all down to um, saying that we could have a future with uh, a world with unlimited energy available and uh, with no pollution. And to think now, a man like Ed Leeds Gallon, just a small guy like he was, five foot tall, and he knew the secrets of anti-gravity. Now, how did he do it? If he can do it, and uh, otherwise fairly uneducated, what would happen if they taught this in our universities? If the dream of a pollution-free world seems like nothing more than a wild fantasy, consider this. A group calling themselves the International Tesla Electric Company is today offering people free electricity to be generated on their own property by a new type of generator that uses the power of magnets. But how did Ed Leeds Scalman, a man with only a fourth grade education, come to understand the most complex secrets of the universe? On Saturday night, Ed would ride his bike into town dressed in his best clothes. He sat on his bike and watched the people studying the personalities of those who came by. And with equal care, he relentlessly observed natural phenomena. Millions of people all over the world have been fooled, including myself, by wrong drawings in astronomy books in showing how the Earth's yearly pass around the sun causes summer and winter. In fact, the drawings are wrong. 
I was lucky. I made a rock telescope and a rock sundial, and they defooled me. Now I know the right path the Earth follows. The scientists should come to Rock Gate, Homestead, Florida, and have a good look at the new drawing, the telescope, and the sundial, and then notice how they would affect science. And he also observed nature with incredible detail. This is for biologists. I can see chromosomes without the microscope. To see, I close my eyes and then I open one eye just a little to look at the blue sky. Then I can see chains of beads floating in the liquid in my eye. Was it simply Ed Leeds Scownan's quiet observation of the world that facilitated his understanding and discoveries about the world? Did he learn his secrets from the study of ancient Egypt? Is all matter composed of magnetism, as Lead Scownan claimed? And can scientists today alter the polarity of magnets to nullify the pull of gravity? Could it be that ultimately the answer is in an invitation to explore and study things for ourselves? Ed's sign at the castle boldly warns visitors, you will be seeing unusual accomplishments. That is certainly the case. On November 7, 1951, Ed Lee Scalman took a bus to Jackson Memorial Hospital, leaving a sign at the castle, We'll be right back. A month later, he died quietly in his sleep from cancer. Unfortunately, Ed died without revealing his secrets. The mystery of his spectacular coral castle remains unexplained. <laughs>